But let's talk FX with a real person instead, Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets. Good morning, Lachlan. Our currency board isn't working, but is it true Aussie dollar's got a bit of a lift? Good morning. Oh, yeah, the Aussie dollar, I mean, it's, uh, it was the worst performing uh, major currency last week. I think it's a, it's a lot of resistance around that 78 US cents mark, and we've seen that all year. As soon as it gets above it, the, the sellers come in. So back down to, it bounced off at 77, kind of minor support level, and about 77 and a half now. I, I would be more tempted to sell the Aussie dollar anything over 78. I think that resistance level certainly seems to be stronger than the support down at 77 and 76, especially with, um, I guess, iron ore prices coming off late last week, and we've seen copper come off a little bit last week as well. But at the end of the day, it seems pretty happy to be trading this range where it's been all year. Um, it's going to take something pretty special, I think, to, to knock it out of it. What do you make about what's going on with the uh, the big doll at the moment? The greenback, uh, it's been volatile. It's, uh, and it had a bit of a rally, then it's petered out last week uh, following that uh, US CPI release. Where do you sit uh, when it comes to the US dollar moving forward? Yeah, I'm a bit of a contrarian with the US dollar. I, I'm quite bullish on it. I think um, it's got a lot of support down here around the 90.3 on the dollar index. Uh, the CPI figure, as you said, did knock it up, which which quickly retraced after the Fed um, came out with their transitory comments and also the poor retail sales figures. But for a couple of reasons I'm strong on the US dollar is that I don't think inflation is transitory. I think at some stage the Fed's going to have to face it in the near future. Um, and also... I think the US dollar is seen as, as a safe haven. And I've got a feeling that the equity markets feel a bit toppy to me. There could be a correction coming. So for those two reasons, I, I'm, I'm fairly bullish on the US dollar, which probably goes against the, the grain of most analysts. Oh, we're quite happy to hear that. We're of the uh, sticky inflation camp ourselves. <laughs> One thing that's always interesting, whenever the ECB speaks, they keep talking about that they're worried about the currency because there's not much they can actually do in terms of policy. So all they have left is that sort of uh, jawboning? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've made it pretty clear they're in no rush to change their um, the, the emergency bond purchases or their rates and they've got a meeting I think um, halfway through June where not real much is expected there either. There are some important figures out of Europe later in the week, uh, the PMIs and uh, manufacturing, I think GDP as well. So I guess we'll get a better idea, we'll see those figures, what the inflation and how the uh, European economy is recovering. But they seem very dovish at the moment, I really can't see them rushing to do anything, they're just going to have to sit there and watch the, the currency rate at this at this rate. Lachlan, do we dare go down the cryptocurrency <laughs> path uh, today? There is so much going on. I don't know where to go and start, honestly. Um, there's so many. What's the main thing that you've been really you know, fascinated by over the past week in that space? Well, Elon strikes again. I mean, you may as well own Tesla stock the way he moves it around. But um, the thing with cryptos, I see the main driver of these being momentum and, and fear of missing out as well. And, and I think fear of missing out can quickly turn into just fear. So I, I don't see Bitcoin performing particularly well in the next few weeks at least. There is still a, a very hardcore group of people that buy all the dips. I mean, you see that this morning, but the $44,000 level is a very important support and it's just holding on to that. Um, yeah, tread carefully with cryptos. And, and what the other uh, interesting thing was that even though Bitcoin's lost some of its dominance of the crypto market, you can see that if that goes down heavily, the other cryptos follow. And, and Ether has also gapped down quite heavily this morning. So, yeah, I mean, tread carefully with, with crypto is all I can say. Because there's a wide range of cryptos, let's face it. There's sort of the serious ones like Ethereum and then there's the meme jokes like Dogecoin. But they all seem to be trading together at the moment. Yeah, Dogecoin dropped down this morning. The, 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 interestingly enough, the only one that's actually performed well today is Ripple, which, um, it, yeah, I don't know why, but it has moved up. Now, um, all the altcoins, I mean, there just seems to be one every day. So, I mean, I heard of one called Panther Swap the other day that some of the guys on the desk are looking at. But um, basically, the crypto space, I think, is, is, is an asset in, in general. And if, if Bitcoin takes a hit, most of the time you'll see the rest go. And... I think once the momentum goes out of them and, and the fear takes over, we could see a drop like we did, say, 2017 after they had that run. Well, that will be certainly making a lot of people nervous given the uh, enthusiasm seen only a month or so ago. Lachlan Meekin mm. from Go Markets, thanks for joining us on the program today. No problem. Thank you.